If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will even distribute your podcast for you. So it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So don't forget to download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hey, what's up? This is Tony making food Mata. And this is Tony Talk, a modified view in the culinary industry. Today, we're going to talk about a little thing called following the rules. Yes, my friends, following the rules. Following the rules is pretty simple. There's a rule and you follow it. It's not too hard. Me, when I was younger, I liked to break the rules. Showing up late, being rebellious, doing this, doing that, not doing what I'm told. And it was very, very difficult for me growing up in the culinary world, in, in the chef life, on the line. Screw that chef. He don't know what he's doing. That line cook, he don't know what he's doing. He's just in, he's in cahoots with the owner. He's a, he's dumb. He's an idiot. He doesn't know. Why is he telling me to do it this way? He's just being a dick. I don't know. You know, those were some things that I'd say. You know, and then showing up late to work. (laughs) I used to show up late all the time. And then I'd be in a rush. I'd have to set up my line. I'd be getting yelled at. My chef would be like, where are you? What's going on? Maybe I was hungover. I don't really know, but it really sucked when I was not following the rules. So one day, I decided to do one thing called following the rules. Showing up on time. Oh my gosh. Showing up on time makes life so much more easier. Or even showing up early. You show up 15 minutes early. You get dressed into your chef outfit. You get yourself a coffee. You you spend that time talking to some of your other colleagues. You're BSing. You're not on the clock. You're not under any pressure. It's good. You're good to go. So now you have at 5 o'clock or 4 o'clock or 8 a.m. Bless your soul if you're a breakfast cook because I hate morning shifts and brunch shifts. But... If you are coming in at 8 a.m. or 10 a.m. or noon or whatever and you show up 15 minutes early, your life will be so much more easier than if you are late. This is a rule. Show up on time. That's what it is. All right. So, showing up on time is the rule. Having some respect for your chef. Actually... That's kind of a rule, too. Yes, chef. Maybe some people don't like to be called chef. Maybe they just want to be called Tom or Tony or Buddy or whatever. But at least you have to address them as something. Okay? That's a rule. Show some respect. That chef, that lead line cook has paid their dues and they have worked their way up. So maybe they know what they're talking about. So, following the health department rules. Okay, not that hard. Lid on cup, straw in cup, with lid, bottom shelf, not hard. Follow the rules. There are so many people in my career that cannot follow that one simple rule. Put a cup on the bottom shelf with a lid and a straw on it. And that's the bottom line. How hard is it? It's not hard. And it just makes sense after you think about it. You don't want that cup up next to your grill or on your cutting board that can get knocked over and spilt in some food. And then you get some germs in it. And then you have to spend more time cleaning up that mess because you didn't want to follow the rules. Right? 
Right. Another thing, you know, wear your apron, wear the proper uniform, wear non-slip shoes. Stop coming into the kitchen with tennis shoes on. If the chef says non-slip shoes, you wear non-slip shoes. If your chef says wear a white or solid black shirt, you wear a white or solid black shirt. It's not that hard. Follow the rules. I cannot stress that enough about some of these rules. Wear a hat. You have to wear a hat. Do you think that I like wearing that tall chef hat? Not really. Sometimes I do. Hey, it's an attention getter, and some of the times the ladies love my tall chef hat. Personally, I'd rather wear a baseball cap. However, that is a rule that I have to follow, so I have to follow the rules. If I ask you to wear a hairnet, wear a hairnet. If you are required to wear gloves for ready-to-eat food, because you are, that is a rule. You follow the rules. Okay, my friends? So, that's some uniforms. Okay? Getting along with your coworkers, that's kind of a rule. You know, maybe you might not like the guy next to you. Maybe he's hooking up with your ex-girlfriend. Maybe whatever. That happens a lot. In the restaurant industry. But you still have to work next to him. And you should probably be nice to him. Because I guarantee you that if you are mean to each other or something, your service is going to suck. And it's going to affect the guests, my friends. Because you don't want to follow the rules of being respectful towards your coworker. Yeah, he might be banging your ex-girlfriend. But you know what? If he is... And that's her problem. That's them. And you know what? You're better than that. Whatever. Move on with it. It's all about the guests. During service. After service, whatever you do on your off time is what you do. But I guarantee you, if you beat him up at a house party after that shift, service is going to be hard the next couple of shifts. Get along, my friends. And don't bang your co-worker, co-workers ex-girlfriend don't do it that's a underlying rule a rule that is not set <laughs> so so okay so that's kind of on the line so if you're on if you're working a saute station hot pan hot make sure your pan is hot follow that rule you'll be successful right if you're doing like a batter, don't skip the first dish, the, the first step, dry, wet, dry, if that's what it is. If it's dry, wet, dry, then go dry, wet, dry. Don't skip that. Follow the rules. Recipe reading. If you are using, let's say, just go back to a batter. I have used Drake's beer batter for a lot, a lot of bars, and I've used it over the course of the years. And it's X amount of this water to a bag of this or beer. And you just follow that rule. Don't just be like, oh, well, this is how I do it and whatever. Follow the recipe. If the chef gives you a recipe, that is a rule. You make the recipe to the chef's spec. That's right. My friends, the chef created that dish, that recipe, that sauce, whatever it is to his design he is the chef he designed it follow the rules of the recipes don't be like oh well the chef don't know what he's talking about i'm gonna do it my way i guarantee you that if you do that your life is gonna be miserable in that restaurant or whatever because you're gonna be butting heads with the chef why don't if you don't like his recipe why don't you just kind of politely say, I was tweaking around with a recipe similar to this the other week. How would you like to taste it? Talk to the chef like that. Don't just be like, hey, your recipe sucks. We need to change it. Respect is a rule you need to follow as well. He is the chef. You are a line cook. And that's a rule. There's all sorts of rules in the restaurant, Right? Make sure you have a sandy bucket. Make sure your sandy bucket is full. 
Make sure that the water isn't super hot. Make sure that it has a correct, correct amount of uh, sanitizer in it. That's a rule, right? Make sure that when you, as mentioned before, in a couple other episodes, make sure that when you bring stuff to the dishwashers, you don't, or you tell them that it's hot if it's a hot pan. That's a rule. Hey, hey, Johnny, this pot's hot. It's not that hard. Or say, hey, hot. If you don't know the guy's name, you should. But if you don't, hey, hey, bud, this is hot. Just let you know. Or, hey, man, I burnt this a little bit, but I'm going to let it soak, and then I'll give it to you. Hey, that's a respect rule. Respect your dishwashers. That's another uh, That's another segment we're going to talk about on a different time. But that's a rule that you follow, right? Follow the proper rules on how to set up a Hobart mixer. You know, so you don't want to... You don't want to put that um, mixing bowl in backwards or you want to because it probably won't work or if it does work, it could potentially slide off. And I don't know if you ever got in a fight with a Hobart mixer, but I personally would not want to get in a fight with a 80 gallon or 60 quart Hobart mixer. I personally would not. That would be, I would lose. (laughs) So. You don't. You want to make sure that you use the proper equipment. You want to use your equipment properly, right? You want to make sure that usually you fry stuff at 350, 350 degrees for fryers. Usually that's the rule on fryers. You know, if you are going to sear a steak, you sear a steak on the hottest spot on the grill, not on the coldest, on the spot on the on the hottest. That's a rule, right? If you make pizzas, you make sure that you dock your pizza doughs. Because if you don't dock your pizza dough, it's going to have bubbles in it. And that's just kind of a rule. Some of these things are just things that you should just know. You should have some cook sense. You should have these underlying rules that you should follow. Cook sense is kind of like spider sense. You know, Spider-Man, he has that spider sense. You have to have something called a little cook sense. And that entitles your senses your cook sense is is that too is that burnt is that going to burn is this pot too hot is this too cold whatever that's another rule if you have a cream based soup do not crank it all the way up and walk away you're going to scorch that you're going to scorch that soup i guarantee it every single time low and slow you'll be all right if you do need to crank it up you better believe that you better be sitting there with a whisk, stirring that every 10 seconds so it doesn't scorch. You cannot get scorch out of a cream-based soup or a thick soup. Never. You can't get scorch out of anything. Speaking about following the rules, another rule that we follow is how we cool stuff down, as mentioned in another, in another episode. You cool stuff down properly. Get out of that time temperature danger zone. Just follow that rule. Cool it down with an ice wand, which I personally hate ice wands. But if you need to use them, you use them. But um, a a blast chiller, an ice bath, use one of those shallow pans. And when you are cooling stuff, please do not put it in the walk-in under ready-to-eat or prepared food. That is a rule that you need to follow. Okay, my friends, so let's talk about, I don't know, relationship rules. So, if you decide to actually hang out with waitress, that waitress named Annie or Mary Jo or whoever, you better believe that you should follow the rule of keeping it professional. You need to keep that stuff professional because if that stuff gets into the restaurant and this, that, and the other, and you guys aren't professional about it, it's going to be a nightmare for you guys. Personally, I would tell most people not to date their coworker. However, in my relationship over the course of my career, 
the most people that I'm attracted to are bartenders and waitresses, and 99% of the girls that I have ever dated has been a bartender, waitress, server, or something at one point in their life. But that's me. That's a whole nother relationship. As a guideline, I would say no on the whole workplace romance rule. So, when we are following these rules, you also have to think about the front of the house management. Yes, you are a cook. Yes, you are back of the house. Right? Right. However, there are different levels of management. There's a front of the house manager. There's a boss. There's an owner. Respect them. Follow that rule. If they ask you to do something, just do it. You are going to be so much more happier like when you just start saying, yes, chef, or yes, yes, whatever you want. I'll get it done. There's nothing more that I hate than a team member or somebody under me or has no experience whatsoever telling me no or you don't know what you're talking about or you're just the chef guy you don't know and they're completely doing what I'm asking them to do wrong and they're doing it wrong I cannot stand that but if you're coming up just say yes chef if the manager, front of the house manager asks you to do something give him some respect by following that respect rule and just do it. Just do it. Your life will get so much more easier if you follow that. Follow that rule. If he's wrong, well, hey man, he told me to do it. I guess that's a scapegoat, if you will. But usually managers, chefs, they're pretty good about things. Um, I might have uh, touched base earlier maybe i'm circling back i don't know but the recipes you know like i said if it asks for one cup of this or one cup of that or even if you're reading the recipes and it says that you need to use a small dice or a large dice or whatever like maybe you might want to actually follow that small dice or large dice one thing about the recipes is that like Everything usually needs to be consistent. They need to be consistently cut the same size so everything cooks together. That's reading recipes is another episode. Uh, but you have to follow the rules of the recipes. Does it say to use a round dough, a thick bottom pot? Um, should, when should you add the roux? Do you cook this first? Do you cook that first? You know, that's things, that's recipe reading and following the rules of the recipe. Okay, so I think that's all I really have about following the rules, but I know that when I first started doing that, saying yes, chef, coming in on time, following the rules, getting along, my culinary career got so much more easier than before when I didn't follow the rules and I was just whatever, yes, I'm still a pirate. And yes, pirates can still follow rules. You can be a pirate. Smoke your cigarettes. Not on the line anymore. But you can be a pirate and follow the rules also. So once again, this is Tony making food Mata. And that was Tony Talk, a modified view on following the rules in the culinary industry. Thank you. Have a good day.